trade for some boats. Uh, or at least that was my suggestion. If we continue on towards uh, Mount Ferenz, and we find a better economy there, we can maybe negotiate with people there. We can work out what we can do. So we can get an idea of what the Golden Fortress is like. We decided that we weren't going to... <laughs> we decided that we weren't going to try to barter for a ton of obsidian chips. Though that's not on the menu, not on a trade for uh, firearms. No, I mean you could try to do a trade for something else. I don't see why we couldn't also pick that up. We're not trading the firearms for obsidian. Maybe, the uh, but we could trade. We could trade the livestock for obsidian. Sure, you figure it out. On the back of your napkin. Okay. Uh, their export is obsidian, right? Yeah, which means it's going to be more expensive. Right, so 120%, and we're selling neutrally with the uh, livestock, is that correct? Yeah, because it's not on their thing. It's, yeah. <clears throat> and All we've right. also got a horrible roll, so keep that in mind. Yeah, so we are effectively trading two tons of livestock for every ton of obsidian. Okay. Yeah, the book does say not to get too precious about stolen goods, which is what we're dealing with here. No, I think you'll find that these are animals. And <laughs> Sorry, there was an argument to be made there that I couldn't figure out where it was it's going. It's not theft, it's rustling. <laughs> Completely different. Says the guy from. I think Look, Texas I'm is the pretty big. I don't think I'm DDoSing you by saying Texas. Texas is a pretty huge state. I'm the one who's literate and has a vocabulary. And yet I'm captain. Oh, well, it's a good thing being intelligent is a qualification for being captain. Oh no, she's rubbing off on me. Mm hmm. Apply cold water. Keep mouthing water. off, and something else is going to be rubbing up against you. It's called barnacles, and it's on the bottom of the ship. Oh, okay. <laughs> ha! A keel hauling reference. I was afraid we were getting sexual. Um, so I'm going to try to keep track of all of these transactions. Been doing in it in chat log. so far. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I'm doing it for my own because I know we'll lose it in chat because we have before. Yes. Oh, Rafferty's back. Ah, via text. Coming to you live. <coughs> in the chat. Down. Hooray. Oh, hey. Oh, hey. <coughs> it's only happened once. Yeah, we do have the echo. Of course. All right. Okay. So, are we doing this livestock obsidian trade? Is that happening? Some of the, uh, lizard folk along the banks of the river will gladly give you obsidian chips in many shapes and sizes for some of these beasts of burden. Uh, I think it's a good idea in general. Uh, it would be a two how much one. could we trade? As much as you can get. Get rid of these animals. Okay, let's go ahead and just trade out all the livestock for a whole bunch of obsidian. Uh... That'd be a lot of obsidian. Uh, oh, I guess be... the question is, how much obsidian do they have ready to export? Like a quarry's worth. Um, I'm I mean, going to say... 18 tons. 18 tons of obsidian. Right? Where did you get that from? Half. Uh, oh. Yeah. It's basically we give them two times as much tonnage of livestock as we get back as obsidian, so 36 tons of livestock. Would be yeah, we're only getting of obsidian. We're only getting sixty percent of their value. So, how much your obsidian? How much is uh, livestock worth per ton? Um, oh, uh, we don't need to do any of the denarii math. If we're doing the exchange rate, the export rate on the obsidian is going to be one hundred twenty percent. So it is literally double. Oh yeah, no, that's right because it's a it's an export good. Yeah, so yeah, that's a great deal. So we get two tons of obsidian for one ton of livestock. Reverse yeah. that. Well, 
They're I, getting the good I deal. I put it into chat if we were just going to accept Perfect. it as done. Sounds like a done deal to me. Okay. Obsidian's expensive, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure because I kept the expensive tag on there. The Obsidian is a much more manageable good. It is fragile, but it doesn't have to be fit. And we have um, storage and supercargo, which means we can traffic in. All right, so let's sail on into the Citadel and we can deal with the gun parts there. Uh, yep. Particularly, it'll also be a different location, so our negotiator has another chance. We're also here to recruit people. Yeah, I know, but we can, well, we can do the deals first, so we have the money, and then the money gets us the people. Friends, how would you like to leave this place and never come back? Would you like to risk your lives on the high seas, striking a blow against colonialism? They'll look at you and say, K? Because they don't speak your language. Uh, I don't sure think that's do. the right... Uh, I don't think the uh, Zongao people are going to be the K people. Oh, I like it, though. K is the Some of these people might be... For what? what? Now, now, some of these people might be, like, you know, persona non grata, um, serial offenders, uh, pariahs of their family, and just generally unpleasant. I'm sure those people who are eager to join our crew. Sure, yeah. Cream, cream of the crop, creme de la crop. Just realize I don't know what the Chinese word or uh, what is. The cream is on the top of the barrel. We're literally talking about completely different parts of the barrel, but but therein lies the uh, the wordplay. Okay. Now, so in the past, oh, there's so much. Well, I believe the scum also puts the top. Hmm. Guess it depends on what's in your barrel. We're gonna plumb the depths of this metaphor. <laughs> I have a feeling that if you're sailing up river. Uh, in the middle of pirate territory, um, not a lot of cream. No, probably not. Especially in a world where your cows are raptors. Also, I'm not paying for cream. <clears throat> <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So uh, it's been mentioned several times now that we're going to head inland into this lake area and then we're going to make dock in the sort of port city of uh Friens town a city populated largely by reptilians and the occasional dragon um where the wealth of this place is on display uh everywhere you look it seems like Every metal fixture in this place has been plated with gold. Gold leaf adorns all of the signs that are all calligraphed in elaborate Zhongguo characters. Um, and although you can catch snippets of the trade winds pigeon here and there, it seems like the common tongue is certainly this foreign Zhongguanese. Zhongguanese. Okay. And what is it that you guys are going to try? <clears throat> We're going to try to recruit some people, right? Well, first, I think that deal with the guns. First, the guns. First, let's figure out. I think this is an opulent place. Um, We're going to say it has maximum buying power. Because if any place in the parentheses does have opulent buying power, it should be this place, I think. Okay. It's a treasure capital, yeah. In that case, literally all of the goods we have left will probably be under the maximum capacity of 12,000. I like to point out, I love the description of the area. They have gold beyond the dreams of even the Emperor, but nothing to spend it on. Exactly. <laughs> they Except eat, for your shitty listen, Bibles. They eat with gold plates and utensils, armors, and gold leaf. They, yeah, tons of gold, yep. nothing to do with it. So exactly, 
Let's see if we can warm up to some of these people who really want to give away some gold. <clears throat> so, right. We're going to redo uh, this I, roll. Yep. Mind will gossip negotiation. I will go ahead and do my own reroll to assist as well. Hey, congratulations. That is a D12. You, maybe you hey, find an interpreter. Hey! Well, I mean, I don't get the bonus for knowing the correct language. So, uh, I mean, in a merchant town, there'll be a merchant who speaks the trade pigeon enough to be able to do a deal with us. And we can what discuss success the numbers. is good. That's why there's a specific bonus if we actually know the language. I have one success this time. I'm learning. Hey. All right. So we want to sell off some guns. That is 7,500, and we have one success. Is this an export, neutral, or an import? Is an import to Gangul. That is 100%. 7,500 out of their 12,000. Damn. Getting the full market value for the guns. See, it's a good thing that you brought me along. Uh, and what about the Bibles while we're at it? Just out of curiosity. Well, I'm guessing that's not a, an, an import. It is not an import, but the Bibles, I believe, are expensive items? They are. Yes, they're, Bibles they're, are expensive. Books are expensive. And, they're and neutral. You, right, and you could, if you decide, to, you know, want to, could decide that they're actually an export because nobody wants them because they're not written in a local language. They might even be, mm. dare I say, illegal, because they're a Western religion we're trying to sell them in a town that is ostensibly Zhongyi's. If they're illegal, let me know, because I could actually get more money for them. <laughs> okay. Let's say they are illegal. I think that I get to roll an extra die! <laughs> Congrats. Roll it. Two hey. successes! All right. Um, all right. I think that would, uh, would they be an no. illegal export or would they just be an illegal neutral? Uh, I, I would say they're in, uh, it's, it's up to you whether they're in demand or not. I'm guessing they're not in demand and they're illegal. So I would definitely put them in the export category. Okay. In that case, your second success bumps that price from 30% to 40% of their right. market value. But they are now so, prescribed, is that correct? That's correct. Alright, so ah, that'll so be an additional 3,000 for the Bibles. Right, that, mean, that means they're not in demand, but they're illegal. Now, Gaston, I'm having a moral quandary here. On the one hand, it would be nice to be able to get extra money for them. On the other hand, aren't we promoting a colonial style ideology? Well, we're not necessarily forcing them to. They want to read it, and they're just not allowed to. If we were here to impress upon them that this way is the best, and that we they needed to be under our rule and learn our specific way of reading it, then that would perhaps be a way of becoming an authority and colonial. But given that they're reading it themselves, and we'll figure it out, and I don't really care what orthodoxy that they end up uh, devising, I'm sure it doesn't matter. I'm still bothered, but not enough to not sell them. <laughs> um, quick, quick. Fair enough. Nothing like dirty cash. Question. Um, Raph, the roll you made. D60, AD12. Uh, which will You have gossip dice, right? Or do you not? Nope. Alright, never mind. I am rolling raw mind and raw will. The only reason why I get to roll an extra D12 is because I actually have streetwise. Sorry, I just... Yes, both of them are literally just high-fiving their way through this. Well, no, no, it's, time. it's that I saw a very good opportunity to make use of a, a commodity that we have. But it uses knowledge that my character doesn't have. So, I was hoping you might have gotten some gossip from the street, but you didn't. Oh. Alas, no, I only have Streetwise. Apparently, only criminals will suffer my company. Yeah. And I don't want a meta game, so I'm not going to do anything yeah. else. I mean, I'm starting to think, like, you know, I might actually have to buy some gossip after all of this, because, you know, I am a person of the people, after all. So, something to go ahead and lay out to people. So, before I was suggesting we might have the total capacity to buy three extra boats. That was assuming we could get full price on all the livestock via barter. Well, we have to turn it all into obsidian. 
So now, we are looking Why? to outfit this boat. Well, Why first we have to hire more crew. No, we haven't crew done anything first. yet. At least, we've been going through the motions. We started when you came back, so... Oh, okay, sorry about that. Uh, no, we need to hire more crew before we can get more ships. We can barely crew the ship we have. Yeah. Right. We cannot buy more, is what I am saying now. Instead, we have a hold of valuable obsidian that we can get more for elsewhere. Right, so we'll just focus on the crew then. Until Abla throws all of it at our enemies. That's true. <laughs> um, your crew, uh, Elderly William, <clears throat> and um, your lookout, Demetrios, they want their shares now before you guys hire a bunch more people and the shares go down. Sure, yeah, do it. How much does that turn out to be? Uh, given that there's six of us, and that would make seven and a half shares? Well, no, we're right, just giving them and their, two, their two shares. Well, we gotta figure out what uh, the size of a share is first. So you need to calculate all the shares in the pot, right? Which, if uh, the captain gets two, first make it one and a half. That would be seven and a half total. Yep. Divide it. Add all the money up, divide it by seven and a half. Uh, These guys are going to get rich. One 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 zero zero divided by seven point five. I mean that that is how the virus kind of works. Yeah, I love it. Wait, okay, and then divide by. I added an extra zero. Sorry. Ah, so you did. Yeah. I was like, wait a second, that's not the right number. Yeah, one thousand four hundred and eighty dinar worth. For sure. Oh yeah, we're rich. Well, okay. Yeah, I'm enough, to retire, enough to retire, providing you only live for five more years. Yeah. Um... If, if these two want to go ahead and say, we're going to bail now, live on Gold Island with all of our gold. I mean, literally. While it's of, blockaded, feel free. One of them is they literally might. an old man, though, so you might only live for five more years. Mm mm. So right. that'll be 2960 denarii deducted from your total coffers. And I think that's a good payday. They might just ditch here. I don't know. Do you guys want to make some sort of morale roll to see if you can convince them to stay? Um, it's been a pleasure knowing you. We can do better. I, I, I mean, on the one hand, it's like, I guess we could roll to convince them to stay. On the other hand, it's got, so there's an old guy and a sickly guy. And I, I, I think we could do better. I mean... Uh, I would like them to stay, actually. Uh, They're the two people I chose. We didn't wind up with these people. I looked at a bar full of healthy-ass people and said those two are the most interesting people here. Well, um, you vastly overestimate our original choices. What do you have to convince them to stay? More money in the future? Tenure? Additional shares? No. Ten years, your position is guaranteed. Well, I mean, hey. Um, you know what? How about the jobs you currently have, tenure? I'm not gonna force the lookout into a boarding party, or I'm not gonna make the rower a shore party person. Tenure in your roles. Demetrios will say that, um, well, I must be honest, that lookout suits me just fine, but elderly William, uh, ever the contrarian, says, ah, I could do half the work for twice the pay on a different ship. Sorry, which one said that? The old man? The old man, the armadillo, elderly William. Isn't it nice to know... That things aren't going to change? Do you really want to learn a whole new ship, a whole new crew, a whole new dynamic? Bah, when you things get to be my age! Out? Well, if you'd like to... If you'd like, you can, you can roll for this. See if you can crack his crusty, contrarian exterior. Um, it would probably be... Well, you're making a logical argument. Mind and negotiation. See if you can get any successes on that. Sure. But can he I would roll? also accept leadership. Can he roll first? 
Just right. so I can um, see what if I'm up against. Okay. Well, he's going to roll two. Well, is, does he negotiate? We'll just have him roll a d6. Ooh. <clears throat> yeah, he's crotchety, all right. So are you. So are you. Ties generally go to the defender. I mean, if I can't convince him, I can't convince him, but I mean... He he might stay for a bonus. For a one-time payment of an additional, I don't know, 100 here, denarii. Here's the, one of the Bibles I managed to say. <laughs> it's expensive! Uh, it's illegal! We're pirates! <laughs> no, son. You're the pirates. I'm going straight. And he takes his big bag of cash. And... Do you speak, Zanvin? Do you I'll speak... learn it! You don't <laughs> he, have... He like, takes like a handful of gold, throws it at a local, and goes, teach me. You don't have the time. <laughs> you don't have the... Oh my gosh. No wonder he's like... <laughs> yeah, so your brain's already full of everything else you've lived with. You can't learn a new language. <laughs> He'd have to sell would... something else back. Content warning, age discrimination. <laughs> look, Content warning, we're all gonna die. Look, it is a known fact that it takes a set amount of time to master a new skill. And it's also a known fact that old people have less time to live. It is also a known fact that your mind becomes more rigid in age. Isn't that so, right, Raf? So, you wow. know, actually, we'll have retiring here... here. With a big sack of gold is actually to our advantage, because other people will see that if they work on our boat, they too get to retire with a big sack of gold. Fair. And get left on an island where literally you can't buy anything with gold. Ah, they'll figure it out later. <laughs> hey, people, the island. Okay. Do you want to take your gold elsewhere? <laughs> you want to travel and actually buy something for your pathetic life? Come with us. That was William, William, right? Retired. Yep. Removing yep. William from the sheet. I am. All right. So, let's do some hiring. All right, time to bring out all that gossip I got. You guys have. Yeah. Or we could lie to all of them. Hmm. Deceit. <laughs> this is an interesting. So this is a quandary, right? And this is maybe it's a bit late to add this to the book now because the book is being printed as we speak. But I wonder, Raph, what your thoughts are on this. So we encountered this in the very first session that suddenly we had a party that needed a crew. And what I did at the time was gen up like three or four random scurvy mates, um, all with varying levels of disability, and then had them choose. Now, for a, a hiring effort of this scale... We're not going to model every NPC. We could just use the irregulars, although you guys probably would want, like... I mean, people are listed as a commodity in the book, you know, as things you can hire or even endanger, which we left out. But, um... No, endanger's in there. Yeah, so you you could hire, like, typical... I would usually treat them as either typicals or elites, where they're all D6s or all D8s. This is also how I populated all of my work environments at the Zongyao game, where I ran a, right, half ran a Right, and then tab. of course, there's always the question about how cynical you want to be, because Rafferty would point out that you don't know if someone's typical or elite until you actually see them perform. But, um... Also, when uh, you're hiring for this, you're hiring on shares and not upfront payment. Right. I mean, that that's... Welcome to piracy. I mean, this guy's cashing out for a five-year retirement. Uh, I mean, once again, this is why pirates were like, well, I got nothing better to do, and I'm willing to kill, and I could actually get five or ten years pay, you know, and all I have to do is not die. So he did, like, two weeks of work and got that. It's a pretty good deal. Why don't yeah, we I just uh, go to a... Let's go into the, the place. If they accept us of wandering around to hell in there, they water, They accepted him. They didn't... She didn't go back to the boat and said they wouldn't let me in. So, um, yeah, let's just go into town, hire somebody to cry out that we're looking to hire people, we'll set up a table at a bar or tavern or something, and we'll just form a queue. Yeah. Interview. We'll interview for people who want the job. 
Okay. Now, how do we want to... So, I guess the idea is... Typically, when we abstract things, you make a roll, and depending on the success of your roll, you get something good or bad. Well, here's right? the thing, is what I said. The first thing I said was hire a crier. So would it not be okay. the skill of the crier that would we be leaning on? Yeah, the would be to hire a skilled crier for, I think, like six bucks a day. We can do that. Gotta just, spend money to make money. Yeah, we'll just hire an exceptionally good crier. Which means, basically, you hire the crier, and then you assist the crier by telling them, okay, I want this, this, and that, which gives them the D12 bonus. And then they go out and use their mind, their will, and their gossip. Not to mention they'll get a bonus D12 because they have oratory and the bonus D12 from your assist bonus, and they'll tell people about uh, the job and we'll get a bunch of people who show up and we can judge who we want who we don't. Uh, honestly, okay. I would suggest that right now... So right now you have one cargo ship and you yeah. have one... Uh, and. We also have the the dispatch, which is what a penance. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's a cutter. It's a cutter. cutter. Okay, okay. So a small fast ship. So we'll build that, and then we'll have a fleet of two ships, uh, and that's it. We're not buying a third ship. Do we have enough to buy another ship? I'm not down for buying not ships anymore. until we're set up with everything else. Okay. So I would suggest that we hire the, the crier. The crier is going to make a roll, and a bunch of people are going to show up, and we could pretty much hire everybody. Because we have enough crew positions to fill everybody. I would suggest that we hire everybody and then watch them for a few days to see how well they perform and fire people who aren't like performing well. But I would suggest we hire everybody who comes because you're planning on getting more ships anyway. Well, how many people do we need anyway? Well, I'm not playing on no ships right now. How many people do we need to crew? Um, uh, let's see. The dispatch has a max of five. The and dispatch is broken down. 30. This patch is broken down. We're not worried about that right now. Okay, the yeah. Is 30. The Lawson's Folly is 30, Max. Right. Well, I'm going to suggest we rebuild the dispatch so we have it ready. Um, so well, I'm that... thinking right now my main concern with rebuilding the dispatch and having it ready is that when we come out the, uh, the river on our way out, we might have a ship waiting for us, and it's easier to handle one ship trying to break okay. out than two. Right. T technically, you need one helmsman and three uh, rigging. Uh, you know, three on the rigging. But if you want to operate twenty-four hours a day, you should have three times that, so you have people on eight-hour shifts. Mm. So fifteen maintenance, uh, nine rigging. So twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Yeah, yeah. And that, that will that will allow us to have continuous operation, which will speed us up. Yeah, three shifts a day. Yeah, I got it. All right, well then, yeah. How much is the crier going to cost us? Uh, you said a couple bucks, like six or shalks. Yeah. I mean, skilled labor is usually two. Highly skilled labor is six. I would spend six. We've got thousands. Well, you're talking about Denari. Okay. I mean, you yeah. guys have enough, so. Um, yeah, how many days So a highly skilled would be like D8s, elites. Highly skilled would be D10s. I rolled D8s, because that's what I assumed you guys were buying. How many days are we going to hire them for? Well, this is another thing. That That's another question. No, the, the crier. The crier. I, yeah. I, I, You're moving uh, ahead. I, I'm trying to keep track of our finances. Yeah, I would assume we would hire them for a week. So let's spend 42. And, and like I said, I would suggest to the GM, you should probably give them a D12. You, sh you should probably give the, for six dinar, you should probably give the crier the D12 bonus for oratory. Yes, their professional prior. And a D12 bonus from the assist bonus from the captain. Because the captain says, this is what I'm looking for. Look for these people. Have a captain rope. Or you have to think how you're, yeah. a, true, you're, you're a team leader, right? No, people he's are. not. So I gave them the D8. Oh. So I rolled 48 okay. and a D12. Yeah, that, that would give them the D8. Right. Okay. And then this just takes a week, and you can see how many people show up. Yeah, we have three successes on this roll. Yeah, during which we have to live for a week, uh, which means we have to birth the ship. So I don't know how much they're going to charge us for that. Probably nothing if it's a pirate town. It's it's not not a pirate town. It's not really. Oh, a so we're in Gongao, We're in a real town. Okay, you're in a real town. I mean, remember, they try in history. They try to reconnect with the empire. The empire. They try to reconnect with Zongao, and we're forced to stay here due to. Goldbeard 
Sorry, the name sounds yeah, off the tongue. So they're they want to repatriate. They can't. they Yeah. They're stuck. I'm just wondering in a uh in a gold making town where the gold it can go nowhere, what inflation must be like. Uh, welcome to the golden age of piracy, where inflation is going to ruin everything. Well, just that they may, they they produce the gold, can't get it anywhere. They make gold into everything. Gold has to be valueless to them. That's why it's an export. 17, 21, 28. Streets are paved with gold. Right, so it's just uh, like post-World War II Germany. I got my wheelbarrow full of money. Will you buy yeah, that loaf of bread? Yeah, if we at least assume like we're living for a day each and it just is a dinar a day to live here, uh, then that would be 28, right? Well, Four birthed, of us, seven days. If we're birthed on the boat, uh, the boat has food, but, but the boat has uh, living quarters. We just stay on the boat, live free, only pay the birthing costs. Yeah, screw you, I'm going ashore. I'm getting some liberty here. All right, well, As am I. <laughs> in that case, figure out whatever you're paying, then. I'll figure uh, out, I'll take mine out of the birthing cost and just live on the boat. How much is birthing? We'll handle that first. I'm trying to figure out something that makes sense. I love how the guy who's injured says, I'm just going to go sleep on the boat. I'm not terribly concerned about the injury. Every drop of my blood is all the drops of your blood. Which makes me think of that Tom is- Fortress 2, the sandwich uh, commercial. He's punched out all of my blood. Oh, my blood! Oh, oh one of my favorites. I'm this. I'm this. I'm going to play Team Fortress. While we're in a uh, port, I'd like to uh, get to work turning some of our expensive obsidian into uh, extravagant items. Yeah, you, you got a week to work. All right, hold on, though. Let's, let's figure one out the birthing cost. Yeah. I know. I'm trying to. It, this wouldn't be in the book, would it? I'm trying to Google online, and you, everything you, you is mean, more uh, modern day. You mean storing the boat? <clears throat> yeah, docking cost. How much does a dock position cost per day? Oh man. Um. To be fair, know, right? to be fair, they don't have a lot of incoming traffic. Yeah. No. Um. This is true. Um, honestly, if we're here uh, legitimately, I mean, we didn't even do taxes. These are the questions of stuff that, you know, thanks for everybody watching our stream. It's like, how much detail do you guys want? Um, because um, at uh, least a napkin level. Uh, <laughs> at least the napkin level. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, while you're Googling online, does it say anything about how much this stuff costs? Usually the answer is too much. I can only get for modern prices. I don't think anyone on the internet has written this down. No, this, this was one of the things I didn't find in my original research. Research. Okay. Uh, let, uh, I'll, I'll, let me see if I can find something. Okay. It's also possible in this case that they just wouldn't. Like we said, they're blockaded. Um, they don't have a lot of incoming traffic. They probably have the room for you guys, so maybe they just let you... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just hang out there for free for now. Waive the normal fee. I mean, the only yeah, other consideration that I would have is that they are highly suspicious of outsiders. If you want to weigh that into them trying to push us away with birthing fees. Exactly. Yeah, I didn't put a lot of stuff about birthing and taxes in the book because I assumed you guys weren't that crazy about it. And here we yeah, are. In which case, uh, let's just go ahead and obviate it then. I thought I love gaming with you guys. You hate fun as much as I do. <laughs> you talking about? I'll be here for the next hour trying to figure this out. All right. Yeah. You don't think so... I'm not already in Google as well? So, Cal, for a week you're trying to work up crew. Uh, Alba is going to be crafting. Well, technically, the crier is working up the crew. I'm apparently on the boat. You're assisting. No, I told the crier what to look for. Okay. I'm not with the crier. You heard him. I tell the crier what to look for. Then the crier goes out and looks for it. I'm just trying to figure out what people are doing. What are Um, people doing? Try to figure out birthing views. Yep. 
Because the other thing I'm thinking of is, since we're going to be sitting around for a week, now would be the time to go ahead and buy that modification. You're assuming that they can do that here. Uh, yep, which would begin with, hey, can we? Followed by, how much sharp is it going to be? Uh, this is the modification for the dispatch? Uh, we could modify both ships. So we're not putting the dispatch back together right now, so... No, not the dispatch. Okay. Yeah. So you'll have to be more specific production. about the modification then that you're talking about, because I don't know what you want. Right. Uh. Well, I was thinking we should probably go ahead and get rockets while we're here. I think it'll right. be good. Rockets. Uh. The rockets. thing about that is, I believe we have four ticks in which we can add modifications, and all four are currently taken up. Was... So we have to choose something to get rid of. Just... Right, we have to get something. Uh, that's why I'm suggesting if we, if we rebuild the cutter, we could ditch the easy keel, which will make us ride lower in the water, but the cutter has a shallow draft and can still navigate. That said, I think we can't ditch that because we need to navigate the river to get out of here. Mm -hmm. mm. Right, so we're going to remain with a flat bottom. I think the easy rigging is still good. So we have supercargo and improved stowage. Uh, improved stowage gives us four times the amount of capacity. Right, we would drop from 120 to 30. Which, fortunately, we got rid of 36 tons of cows, or cattle. I so how much, how much do we have left? Uh, looks like 36 plus 7. Okay, so, 40, so we would 40, have 45. to get... We would have to get rid of seven tons worth of stuff if we got rid of improved stowage. We could get rid of some of that in exchange for the modifications. Uh, that would make sense. Uh, so, let's go ahead and go back and see how much the stuff that's taking up a lot of space... What are we, what are we replacing that with? Rockets. Uh, that, is, that is my suggestion, of course. Well, no weapon. Sorry, weapons would be better than no weapons. So I approve of this plan. Right, and of course, if we wanted a lot of cannons, we would have to get rid of even more. We need a bigger Which boat. Is, we would need a second boat. Yeah. But well, we need a second bigger boat. Right. So, uh, let's go ahead and check it out. So we've sold off the Bibles and we've sold off the gun parts, I believe. So we have the clothing and the bread. You know, while we're here, we could rebuild the uh, the cutter and put guns on it. All right. So uh, at no. the location we're at. The cutter's never going to get guns on it. I don't want guns on the cutter. Yep. A, a sensible choice. I was just pointing out we could, but I can also respect that you would not. All right. I want to so take right. ships, not burn them to the ground with rockets. Uh, flash question. So for food, this is going to be an export, neutral, or import? Food is going to be neutral. They Neutral. do. It's not an export on the list, so I assume they have some sort of farmable. The argument. Land. And I was gonna what about make, clothing? The argument I was going to make earlier is that they're actually losing all their food. That's background well, that's in the book. True. But, yeah, they are being blockaded, so maybe food is going to be an important import. But we don't know that, which is why I was making the uh, gossip argument earlier. But nobody has gossip and screw, so we don't know that they're yep. starving. I have street uh, wise, see the I blockade. I can oh, I can gossip with other pirates and criminals because I have streetwise. I do. So the way that I think this is broken down is that there is a pirate population living here among these people, but the majority of them are soldiers in this, and you know, commoners in this Jongwanese, uh, yeah, government, uh city township thing all right so officially neutral or import officially we'll say import okay and clothing what about clothes we still have clothes to sell yes we oh, also still have seven tons of clothes oh oh we do yes uh that would be neutral okay neutral so i'm gonna go ahead and figure that out real quick actually I'm going to say that's export. They don't really need clothes. Okay. So well, I will factor that out for a quick. 
I mean, they have their own... Again, they've been established here for quite a while. I think they've kind of figured out their their clothing situation. They certainly don't need stuffy bisque livray clothing. Ah, uh, who needs that? Yeah, when you just wear gold. Gold, gold air. Exactly. The Calabrian fashion tastes are um ugh. Disgusting. So if we're looking to barter this out for working on our ship, we could go ahead and factor out as much of this as possible for 2,850 dinar worth of modification. Uh, leave some of the food behind. Don't get okay. rid of all the food. Because, I mean, that just means we have enough food that we don't have to worry about the logistics of food. So just keep I, some of the food. I will go ahead and say for reference that... Uh, well, we should sell everything we can't keep. We're in a large enough place to do it. Well, why can't we keep it? We're eating it. Uh, we can't sell it because we've already run out their liquid assets. Well, we have to trade. I thought you said we we're going to trade for our rockets. Right. No, I'm sorry. I'm just making the argument of keeping some food. If that was, well, we got to keep thirty tons worth of food. No, we only have eighteen tons right now. I'm saying, oh. I'm saying, don't okay. sell all the food. Okay, I sounds understand. good. Uh, I'm just trying to get back to the page with the modifications on it. I've I've lost track of it again. Here we go. <clears throat> uh, rockets are a mere six hundred. Uh, light cannons would be three thousand. Hmm. Well, did you already make the sales? Sorry, I'm trying to keep the track of the. I had it. These are these are the possible amount of money we can make. We we, we could either buy light cannons, which are three thousand, or we could buy rockets, which are six hundred. Rockets shoot farther and have a chance to set the other one on fire, but they do less damage. And I think you, as pirates, you might be better off with cannon because they're more likely to disable a ship than they are to burn it to the ground. Right. Uh, so that would be, uh, so Captain, go ahead and tell me how many tons of food do you want to keep? Well, first off, you jump forward for a bit and I need to bring you back a step. You said we ran out their, uh, the liquidity of the, uh, the area already? I, I think there might be 500 worth left. Okay, so what you are proposing here is just equivalency in trade when you put the money values down. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right, that's what I'm trying to keep track of. Because otherwise, I don't know where we're at. Um, sorry, now what was your question? Uh, what was it? How many tons of food do you want to keep? I mean, how much does a ton of food last us? How much would a ton of food last 30 people on a ship? I was waiting for somebody to ask that. Okay, somebody look up in the book how much food weighs. Oh boy, okay. It should be in the book under herbivore or carnivore. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I'm actually already at that section. Are you now? Uh, just about. Just got to scroll down a little bit. I do food. Edible food. Uh, one quarter stone. All right, and I know in coral somewhere it equates with a There's stone. about 160 stone in a ton, which would be 640 man days worth of food. Her time. Assuming no spoilage. So that would be Divided 30 people 30. 21 days yeah. with a little bit left over per ton. Mm. Yeah. So f four tons? Keep four tons of it? Yeah. Okay. What we, so. what we should do is we should get some water while we're here. Uh, in terms of Food that we actually do consume otherwise, like for actual the the actual trip, assuming we didn't just have a store of trade goods here, how long does that normally last us would be another question. I don't understand the question. Yeah, I don't understand either. Uh, okay, well, we're because that is that is the food that we're eating right there. So yeah, okay. how much uh, how much does cheap wine weigh? Cheap wine. Should be on the same table as food. I know I put it away. 
Food and drink. Uh, spirits. A quarter stone. Okay. All right. So if we might also want to get four tons of cheap spirits. That keeps better because it's got low levels of alcohol in it. Yeah. And, and we'd actually have to pay for that. Uh, whereas water, you could technically filter and pump in yourself, but um, I'm not sure you just want lake water. Uh, so, um, because, you know, uh, we might get thirsty. All right. And we do have spare tonnage. Yeah. Plenty of it now. Well, we got eight tons. Yeah. Notice we just went from 120. I mean, I imagine you guys, like, you guys are, like, gutting this ship. It's, like, all that space. We have to take out the floors, reinforce the floors, get those big wooden... Uh, and these aren't on wheels. These these cannons are on slabs. Then it's brass cannons. Or actually, we got light cannons, so they might still be iron. But still, it's putting those slabs. And then we have to get the gunpowder. Oh, wait, we wait, wait, wait. wait. What, what was the appointment that we got rid of again? Uh, uh, improved, uh, store, uh, improved stowage, which drops our storage from 120 to 30. Right, and we replace that with what? Cannons, I think Light is what cannon. you're voting for. All right, it's sorry. either cannons or rockets. I'm making the changes on the other page that has all our ship stuff. So I want okay. to make sure that I'm keeping up with you guys. Right, cannons are more expensive, but they do more damage. Rockets have greater range, but they also set things on fire, and I think you expressed concern about burning things down. Yeah, no, like I said, I'd rather capture ships and the stuff on them than burn them to the right. sea. I mean, rockets are fantastic if you want to, like, you know, do war and burn stuff to the ground. I also so, consider okay. the uh, ship combat stuff to... It seems to me that the range benefit of rockets is, like, a one-turn bonus if we roll poorly or they roll well on a helm, on a helm yeah. check. So well, it's not worth yeah. burning the score to... I mean, what they're fantastic for is for taking... They are more land. effective ordinary weapons in this context. Yeah, I mean, if you want to take land, uh, like fortifications are fantastic. So we have a cargo ship that has a cannon on it now. Light cannon? Light cannon. And Light you're cannon. saying that okay. uh, the end cost of that is 450 from our Denari pool? That is correct. Got it. And, and that would take a couple days to rig up, but we'll... Okay, we have now we have been upgraded from cargo ship to war ship. We're a war flute now. Indeed. And then not a very good war flute because we only have like. Then Abla wanted to do stuff. Now that I think we handled everybody else's concerns. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, however many days of crafting we've got. Uh, that would be we we're here for a week. Um. How much do you think? How many tons do you think Abla can get through in a week? Fred. Well, ton is six is six forty man days. I'm sorry. Uh, this is of obsidian. We're talking about obs of obsidian. Food. Oh, uh, yeah, six hundred forty man days of obsidian. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm thinking that you take a. One stone chunk and turn it into maybe four eight stone items, you know, to account for wastage. Okay, I like well, to that think that uh, Abla has been a towser this whole time. Oh, because of the green. Oh no, because you're eating obsidian. Oh, I'm not eating it. Yeah, well, that was a rabbit funniness. That was hilarious. Huh? So anyway, uh, what is a standard crafting role? Would it be the same as the maintenance uh, appointments role? Uh, ooh. Hmm. The maintenance appointments role. Okay, to, to attach um, appointments... Each one of them lists uh, a labor unit cost with like a laborer next to it. So, what's the labor to attach a cannon? Crafting for the light cannon looks like 600 mittens, 
300 tools and the gift of wealth. What's that first oh, icon? Oh, that's why we can't get cannons. We don't have wealth. Uh, the number to the left of the mitten is the cost of materials in denarii. So it's 600 denarii. Um, but yes, apparently wealth is key here. We, we would have to get somebody who has wealth to buy or do the appointment for us, which means we either have to have a wealthy friend or be wealthy ourselves. Try to well, make there has friends. to be at least one wealthy friend person here. If we can convince them to give us cannons somehow, then maybe we can do so. I mean... I it's time to get yourself a contract with someone who wants you to go privateering, is what you're saying. You know, yeah. there is a... Uh... A king in charge here, and he's got a problem. I and mean, he, oh, for one thing, he's loaded with gold, so probably he has the gift of wealth. But he has a problem with these oh. pirates that seem to be sieging him. Seems like there's going to be some sort of deal that could be made here. Well, the the good news is we could possibly we could get a wealthy sponsor. I mean, that's the trick with Candace. We have to get a wealthy sponsor. Um. The problem, of course, being how we're going to negotiate that, because I only have two skills, lying and crime. Mm. Well, we could pantomime. I mean, I could make an appeal, but it would, but did I mention my personality is horrible? I, mean, I, have to, <laughs> I, I would have to go in there and make an appeal of like, yes, we'll destroy, we will crush your enemies. Here's my like, problem there, is that my personality is optimistic, and I know you can do it. And no, A, no. even if you die, you die to try. It's, it's nice that you believe in me. But, um, so, we could make an appeal, but I mean, we're just some random people who wander off the street. Now, going back to rockets, what do we need for rockets? Uh, language zongies. We need to find someone who can build us a boat that knows zongies. Uh, really, what we should do is we should buy the gift of wealth with 10 points, and usually the person who buys that is the freaking captain. Uh, just a quote, if an appointment requires a gift, the taskmaster in charge of installing the appointment must have the gift. Right, so in other words, we, we, would, we would have to get someone else to install it for us. We'd have to get a wealthy person who, you know, to do it for us. And in which case, that's not impossible, but a wealthy person would probably want something in return so that's when we have to go you know when once welcome to the wonderful world of piracy where we have to seek out a patron hey, Griff. or steal yes. cannons does which is have a mystic? Have cannons. uh i do not have a mystic at the moment oh uh, that'd be a shame because we could get auspicious station i would also want. love an auspicious auspicious yeah, station you need, yes. you need you need some kind of mystic to use an auspice so we have to uh i mean that'd be perfect for you and it would Something we could put on the boat. It allows us to remove another thing. No, I mean, so we, instead of the cannons. Yes, I'm so on mm -hmm. board with just boarding ships that I'm so not concerned about cannons. But if y'all want cannons hard, I'm not going to argue. No, we could, uh, um, I mean, we could just keep this as a cargo. Uh, I would not have an objection. I mean, no, we went through all this rigmarole. I would not have objection to keeping this a cargo ship and having us try to be sneaky and actually steal. You're planning on raising the size of the crew itself. The problem is, is after we hire a bunch of crew to get us on the ship and we have all that cargo space, we don't have a prospect in mind of a ship to steal. Oh, we do. Oh, which is? No, the one that followed us up to the river. It's probably sitting there waiting for us, I'd assume. If it's not blockading, they're gonna blow the shit out of us. Hmm. I mean, well, it's yeah, at I was the edge say... of a river, though. There's a chance that we could, I don't know, disembark at the edge of the lake, cross a couple of miles of land, and then through the uh, shadow of night, as it were, assuming their species, because that's what I do. I'm a racist. <laughs> I assume yeah. species. Uh, they're gonna have at least one nocturnal. Well, we can also distract them with our own uh, avian. We, we also distract them with their own lack of cannons and rockets. Oh, no, no. I was going to say uh, cross the uh, distance and then... I mean, the proper way to steal a ship is to go to a harbor where there's a ship with cannons and just freaking steal it. 
I'm also completely down for getting into a cannon fight with somebody else. I mean, yeah, no, I, I by think, which uh, I mean taking fire while working distance. Honestly, okay, so what we should do is we know about the blockade, so we might be able to make an appeal to a lord to sponsor us. He doesn't have to put up the money. He just has to agree to sponsor us so we can actually get the cannon. Because they just don't sell cannon to anybody. It's the ruling class kind of objects to them making cannons for no reason. Um, we could get someone to sponsor us and then we put up the money, basically giving us what's called a letter of mark. Because the people here might not like the blockade. It might not be that hard to say, hey, sponsor us and we'll go blow up the blockade. All we do is sign off on this. We're going to spend our own money and blow up the blockade. Who wouldn't sign off on that? The only thing is it's embarrassing if we commit atrocities in their name. Exactly. True. And we can also like, become privateers well, for them as well. Well, that, that's exactly what it is. So we'd have to find yeah, a sponsor, yeah. which we could do. That would just be a case of using gossip to find one and then negotiation to get them to help us. Two skills we do not have in any capacity whatsoever. Indeed. I'm up for it. Let's give it a shot. Certainly, Buying more dice never fail. Buying more dice never helped me. Oh, no, we could fail. Okay, here's the other thing. I do have a social skill that can help us. I have a lot of deceit for reasons I care not to disclose. <laughs> if we had some sort of convincing lie we could tell them, I could get extra dice. We could tell them that we are, of course, from the Bisclave, and we are here to help relieve them. But, oh no, our ship was not prepared. <sighs> In other words, along we, those lines. we could claim to be agents of the Bisclave crown, and seeing that the Bisclave and Zhang Gao are good friends, and your goal is to repatriate, we are here to help you against the pirates. You should totally sponsor us. Here's the name of our real lord back in Bisclave territory who would be happy to help you get back. We could we could do that. We could just lie. Incidentally, just so you know, we have insider with the Bisclave Navy now. We do, which makes we have it an additional ability to lie. I didn't sell that back. So if we want to pretend to be Bisclave, we get an extra two dice. Now, I'm guessing the Game Master is going to raise the difficulty because we're lying. But on the other hand, wow, that is a great lie to tell. In fact, let's go raid the captain's quarters and get the one or two Bisclave uniforms that we must still have lying around and put those on. Bad. I mean, couldn't hurt your chances. <laughs> I mean, we have the inside of Bisclave Navy. We know how they dress. We know how they talk. Ho, ho, ho. I, am, I need a bunch of wolves. I believe... Poor people should be oppressed all the time. It's Levio Saw. You see. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Rafferty froze. Yeah, I know. Well. And we're back. Good. <clears throat> so I suppose the two steps were either gossip and then negotiation, or is it all wrapping up into one here? Try to get in there and also lie at the same time. Uh, first I think it would have to be gossip to figure out who is, which might not be that hard. I mean, like I'm thinking, like, finding out who the rich guy is with the money is probably only requires one success on gossip, which would be trivial if any of us knew how to do this. Uh, fortunately, at least, I can assist you and maybe get a little bit further. I mean, we're, we're terrible people, but we work together. We have the power of friendship, and everyone knows the power of friendship can conquer anything. I can think of no better reason to be friends than to defraud the nobility. I can think of nothing better to do. <laughs> so Be good friends. All right. So Red, I'll toss it to your court to go around talking yeah. around town with this mind gossip. I guess to start. Usually it's yeah. All right, mind gossip. I, I got a D six mind. I will assist our madame. All right. Let me see. If you I get a D twelve success. Man, I just read a whole bunch of pages on ports of call, and none of it was useful. I don't um, want to point out. So I'm going to say I want two successes again because most of the people here don't speak your language. Oh, there are some that do. Those are the people you'll be talking to, but it's a small part of the. Huzzah! Congratulations. Okay. Language would only hold me back. 
Hmm. Okay, then. You, uh, after poking around town, you hear that there um, are some wealthy and maybe people who came from less than reputable origins who have risen to positions of wealth and power within this community, uh, one of whom is a... Uh, we're going to say a uh, a cat who has restyled herself as sort of a Zhongguanese noblewoman who is um, sure that she can make killing uh, exporting the quarried minerals. Um, she's set up a whole operation, but these damned pirates in the bay are going to cause a big problem for this scheme. And she's willing to, as you said, uh, get you the clearance you need to put cannons on your ship if you promise to uh, clear out some of these pirates in the bay, at least weakening well, the blockade. Why, just what giving us the cannons that will allow us to run the brigade will then unify with the mighty Bisclose fleet, who are no doubt just waiting for us to come back and, and, <laughs> and talk to them. Isn't that right, Gaston? Ah, that's true. There is no finer force out there than ours. Oh, our cannons fire true and far, and and then we howl with our big, goofy voices and um, slip each other's butts, or whatever it is colonials do. <laughs> okay. You trust me, so give me, I'm a colonial. Give me this deception roll, then. <laughs> I need some help, Gaston. Mind... Mind go oh no, this is Will. We are just brazenly lying. Oh, I have a D4 Will. Will. Please enjoy. We'll give you a D. Ooh. <clears throat> That's okay. Oh, Where he's a team oh, player. Oh, oh okay. we are also <laughs> pretending to be Bisclavay Navy, so I do get the D12. You get the D12 bonus. There you go, and now you get my D12. Because we didn't sell that back yet. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I know exactly what they're like. Exactly, <laughs> you guys observed that. Yes! Not oh, me. man! If I had a favorite use of deceit, I could I could improve this. I don't have a favorite use of deceit. <laughs> Lying about <laughs> pretending to be a colonial. Uh, um, well, not pretending to be colonial. Lying, lying to, to colonials. Lying to. <laughs> can I put up lying to rich people? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it is a specific use case. Okay, deceiving rich people. All right, because that's what I would do. Just eat the rich. Liberty, Galpy, camaraderie. Four successes! Four successes. Not only... Rush job! Does she believe that you are Bisclavre? It turns out that she has had favorable dealings with the Bisclavre Navy in the past um, and has uh, full faith that you can carry out your mission. So, um, we should really make sure our records are together. So, you should really give us all your notes on all of their naval movements so we can make sure you're up to date, especially their most indefensible and vulnerable location. Lovely point of note. Uh, we should definitely never return here. I don't think she would. Oh, oh, no, four, four, exactly. I know. No, I'm trying to give you something. I don't know if she would necessarily have the like naval movements, uh written down somewhere. She's not a member of the Navy. Right. I, but I, 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 I make a suggestion. I mean, the easiest suggestion well, yeah. I have is just this is a future assist bonus to fuck up the Bisclopy Navy. My suggestion would be a goal to fuck them up. And I then press it and suggest it later. Yeah. Well, That's already happening. You're going to get just, worry about that. I suggest both of those things happen. Yeah, I, I would suggest just yeah. keep this in mind for later. Yeah. Um. You know what? Uh... She'll I'll give you, you know what she'll do? She'll give you a letter of thanks to the Bisclavray Navy, which should just, like you said, give you a bonus on future checks to do. Cool. Yes, yeah, so what does this say? It says, uh, very graciously, our Lord Meow uh, thanks the Bisclavray Navy for their assistance in this. What's your name? native alphabet, by the way? <laughs> hmm. uh, oh, here are mine. I mean, you you use the you use the uh, uh, the Magdalene question the the Cal the Calabrian alphabet, right? 
Oh, yeah, that would make sense. You're a yeah, so this might be extra difficult. <laughs> I well, can't we, read it. We, we didn't make a huge point. Well, that's what you probably had oh, drafted. They probably this had is, drafted yeah. in it, yeah. Yeah, we didn't make a huge point about it, but it is mentioned in the depths of the Iron Claw book that literacy is per language uh, or Makes certain sense. languages. Like all the Calabrese languages use a consistent alphabet, except for Xenophon, which uses its own alphabet, and Agam, which uses its own. Never mind. Um, and then we can get into all the different alphabets in China. You I can't wait. Find... <laughs> Certainly, they have one single unified system, right? They don't even have one alphabet today. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, um. Uh. Man, uh, all the politics of this. Excellent. We'll get on this right away. Thank you so much for the cannons, uh, Rubis Clave. God save the king. Uh, other colonial bullshit. Uh, all right. Yeah. So they'll begin to. The queen you got your. Does that mean she gives us a flag? Ooh. Oh. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I Why know. Not, right? probably played Sid Meier's Pirates. That's the one where you like look at the horizon and see who are they, and then once you find out who they are, it's like okay, well, either fly the friendly flag if you don't want to kill them. Or fly an unfriendly flag, at, flag if you do. Uh, and then there's the embarrassment of trying to get into port and trying to remember which which countries this port is friendly with so you don't so sail in played, with the wrong flag. We played, that game. we played that game so differently. I just, ran, to load it up again. I just ran ship to ship, port to port, taking over everything. Well, that's who you are. I never had a problem with anybody because All they, I did were, was ballroom dance. they were they were mine. Play- you gotta play on a higher difficulty level if you want problems. Yeah. That's <laughs> right, Everybody, yeah. Sid Meier's Pirates stream after this. Let's go. Oh, Sid Meier's Pirates is great. Guys. By the way, would the um, dispatch cutter have had a flag? Well, you, you have, it was you a have, fishing have, ship. I mean... No, it's a dispatch cutter. It's not you, a... The purpose of a flag is so when someone sees you, they know whether to... No, I'm know, asking the GM if it had a flag on it. Oh, hard stolen? questions. I don't remember where. Yeah, that's it was stolen. It was five otters it back was on in our township. I'm not. I'm and asking I, the GM if it had a flag on it, not for you to not sell it, but it, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, where did you steal it from? Uh, from Barbarossa, Barbarossa township. township. Oh, and well, who's Barbarossa uh, allied with? You know, we established that it was the a, It was a failed colony, but we never said a colony. Of Okay, they probably don't. Since they're not, just a fishing ship didn't go anywhere, they probably don't have a flag. They probably well, so flag. they were on their way to join a a larger ship, the Merryweather. Oh, okay. Then, then this they is probably why you had have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then they probably had a Biscay flag, so they wouldn't get blown out of the water. All right. Sorry. We'll say, although they're also a, they're also a dispatch, which means they might not have had one because nobody cares. Your example is Admirers Pirates, but I keep thinking Lord of War. Where he just changes the registry and the flag on the shipping vessel every time he's about to get boarded and it's searched. Yeah, so, that's what you do. Yeah, so having a wide variety of flags. That's why I just wanted to know if the dispatch had yep. a different flag. And then you get um, what's called a port of convenience, where we have a flag that we can fly just to, you know, claim, oh, no, we're totally legit. Mm-hmm. Which so, reminds yeah. me, we have to start forging the records, which we haven't started doing yet. What was the uh, text of the goal, by the way? That hasn't been said yet. Goal. Uh, we're going to say... Blockade. And we're going to say clear a path through the blockade. But I think maybe we should make it more specific. In terms of like what actually needs to be accomplished here. All right, rebuild the dispatch cutter. We're gonna well, set okay. it. On, we're gonna set it on fire and point it right at them. Okay. Fire I ship. Fire ship. Uh, I, mean, I, I have to be honest here. If we're being sponsored and we're just a light warship, then we would probably be our sponsor would probably charge us with specifically escorting a ship through the blockade. Like that. Either to escort someone through the blockade or because she's our sponsor, let's get back to contracts. She might say, recognizing that your ship is a cargo ship and I just endorsed for the guns, I have a load of 
this that I want to go somewhere else. In a separate fair trade deal, I will pay, right. you know, pay you to take this, but you have to break through the blockade to do it. Right. Normally, I would think a bunch of random people who came off the street wouldn't be able to do this, but there's something about your four successes <laughs> that you can possibly pull this off. There's something about your blind confidence that you've instilled in me. So well, the also, goal shouldn't actually yeah. necessarily have anything to do with the blockade. The goal should be sale of that has the... Us get past it. Or no, it should be sale of the goods somewhere. Yeah, I, in fact, I would about. think that would be even better. Have a contract and say your goal is to go to this place and unload this, which is probably gold since this place exports that, uh, at this other spot, and make that the goal, which as these, you know, implicit text don't get killed in the blockade. That makes that would make a lot more sense to me and would also be more political. Like, you know, I know we're kind of glossing over this, but that would make more sense to the story. It's like, okay, I'll sponsor you. You know, here's my sign off so the fort, you know, will sell you the can the city will let you buy the cannon and install it without arresting you. And then a second deal, I need this ship to there and you just happen to be here. And seeing as you you're a great fiscal day people. You'll have no problems doing this at all. In fact, the pro she's probably going to send us to a freaking fiscal day colony. She'll probably send you to Richport. <laughs> Maybe not Richport. Hilarious. That's a failed colony. Um, well, why would a failed colony need gold? Well, it's stone is what she was trying to transport. Oh, that makes more sense. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. They're trying to build infrastructure. So, yeah, uh, okay. Uh and, and how much is it? Because uh, how much, uh, uh, Griffin, how much space do we have left? Uh, well, we have 20, 30 total, and we have 18 tons of obsidian, plus 4 tons of bread. Okay, so we have 8 tons left. We dried eight vegetables tons left. and dried meat, not just bread. Thank you. Bread can go bad. Yeah, yes, we can carry 8 tons of quarry stuff. Now, we still have a super cargo position, so we can still carry um, expensive goods. Yes. I forget if we're quarried stone. Is quarried stone expensive? Uh, I so I have it's it here. Pretty... It is extravagant, actually. Oh, apparently. we can still traffic in that. Perfect. Oh, yeah. We have a ship actually perfectly fitted for this task. Though. Yeah, this is extremely, you know, like, yeah, stone cutting is a rare skill, and then you have to have the stone that can cut it. Like, this is the really nice shit. This is like marble. Uh Quarried stone. I guess they're hoping that if they have like a very fancy marble palace there, that people will actually want to come. Well, I'm not, I'm not an architecture nerd, but it might be like the specific kind of stuff they need for certain kind of construction. <laughs> now, Hi. here's the other question, because then she needs the money to get back. So you have to make the run there and get back with the money well, that you get for it, right? These, How does that work? Are these are also contracts. This is the future when banking exists. It could just be that because she has a written contract mm. and a healthy relationship with the Biscovay, we deliver it and then they write it for her bank and then she gets the credit. That's the advantage of contract dealing. Something okay. I'm not getting into a huge deal. No, I like that. That's good. I just wanted to know the mechanism. If we rip her off, she'll get really upset. Yeah. So there's my goal. Trade Z limbs quarried stone at Richport. Yeah. Implicit I mean, in that to survive. Yeah. The blockade. Welcome, welcome to the world of banking. Welcome to the world of capitalism. This is, I believe, early stage capitalism. I'm Indeed. starting to think your I think your theory, maybe your theory is right. My camera doesn't get enough power. That would explain why it blanks out for periods of time. Uh, not exactly power, it's more like the amount of USBs it can actually juggle at one point giving it inputs, so if there's too many giving it inputs at the same time. Well, it might also be power, because like I have a USB up with, with four things plugged into it. Yeah. Okay. So, we need to trade the quarried stone at Richport, and we are presumably just going to get cash on return as payment for the contract, I suppose. Uh, is this, well, this might be, yeah, she'll probably pay you something. Well, we, we, yeah, I mean, we might get paid well. when we re return, but to be honest, it's sort of like she sponsors us, we pay for our own cannons, and then says, okay, you agree to deliver this for me. Otherwise, it's a crime. Yeah, right, like, really, you're doing this for the gift of wealth. <clears throat> 
that you're We're really doing this for the gift of well, which once again implies we're good. part of the banking system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I'm going to have to turn down because I can't be part of the capitalist system. Mm. Captain, I'm going to have to withdraw 2,200 gold and be rich now. <laughs> hey, you guys, I, I, you guys know I, I, I hate spend... fun, right? Exactly. No, no, I have a question. Uh-oh. Do we have to buy ammunition with light cannons? Uh, with the simplifying assumption in the book is we assume you're getting more ammo. So we have infinite ammo. Uh, the only issue with ammo is if you want to get an armory, which, if you notice, raises the damage of all of your weapons. Well, it gives you special uh, loads that you can fire. Right. Yeah, I was looking at those. I was wondering what was required. If the answer is armory, there's my answer. Yeah, add yeah. extra options to weapon stations. Right. I mean, that, that uh, the game is to science. You're going to keep going, man, we need a bigger boat. I mean, we need bigger boats. <laughs> We need a bigger we always boat. need a bigger boat. Oh man, if or only I had rolled up a shark character whose motto was we need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We still haven't really resolved what happened with the crew, did we? You guys rolled three successes on that. Uh, I'd say So we, we hired a crier. crier did. How, how well did the crier roll? Rolled three successes. Okay, so I assume he would get us uh, a large complement of the crew. How what? How many people do we want to hire? Uh, Thirty let's is see, your max. We lost size. one, so it's one, two, three, four, five of us right now. So twenty-five more people. Okay, so we want to hire twenty-five more people. Uh, and how much are you willing? Uh, uh, and, so I I would assume that with three, you know, with three successes from a trained guy. We would definitely get 25 competent people, and the GM could rule that a certain number of them are, you know, unusually good. Um, let's see. Okay, now remember, when it comes to shares, do you want to do half Marines and half Sailors, or do you want to do something else? Half and half honestly sounds good. Probably want more Sailors than Marines. And okay. if we have exceptionally good people, have the exceptionally good people be Marines. I mean, we rolled three successes, which I think would give us some leeway. How would you feel about nine sailors, eight marines, and eight militia? Ooh, very interesting. You're thinking of going ashore and doing things, right? Well, the only problem with militia is they don't automatically have sea legs. So, but they get craft and fighting skills. But our marines basically just as good as militia on land. What do militia get the marines? No, uh, marines don't get um, marines don't get craft. Mar- marine marines get range combat, melee combat, and swimming, and they get sailing. But we have two I pieces. do like this because Alba will benefit from it a whole lot by having a crafting crew under her. I mean, the the biggest problem with militia is that the militia's skills will be capped at their highest transport die. So the militia, if we have to press them to doing naval warfare, we we'll only have d4s and everything. Unless you're using your helm, unless you use a helm to steady the ship. Well, my question now resides uh, since stations are basically PCs with the skills with a crew under them, what benefit does having a crew with craft benefit you in a station concept? Um, Especially since we have two PCs with craft now. You know, not really. We make the simplifying assumption that the people on your crew uh, are um, following are your instruction. Married. Yeah, and I could see like the GM could make the simplifying assumption that if you're, you know, all militia in a crew position instead, that they might actually cap your dice or something like that. But because um, I mean, that's same- why I was, I, I was suggesting that we might want to take some militia on board because militia know how to fight, so they're still useful on the cannons. And um But Marines are good on cannons too, aren't they? Yeah, they're range type. Well, tactics, Marines are good on tactics. cannons and Marines are good for boarding. Sailors are good for sailing because they're really, really good at it. And then um militia would be good for cannons and labor. Because well, they get cracked. Don't Marines get tactics? Right. Yeah. I mean the the Marines are when you do the boarding, the Marines do the boarding. No, 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 the I'm saying really- cannons work on tactics. So if Marines have tactics, they're also good at cannons. Right. 
No, the Marines are good at everything related to war. The sailors are great at everything related to sailing. The militia are good, are craftsmen who can fight. Right, right. That's mm -hmm. why I'm bringing up the the, uh, the station thing, because Abla is already our basic repair person. Put a crew under them. Uh, mechanically, it doesn't matter what they do. They'll still work what Abla tells them to do. I mean, mechanically, no, but, um, you know, like for role playing purposes, I mean, we did put a section in there, so we have over this. I'm just suggesting that we might want to hire some militia because we don't have a lot of crafting. And as you notice, crafting is a very good skill to have. Well, then I would suggest minimizing the militia to an extreme because I would hate to have a bunch of people who are okay. D4 or set, even repairing shit. How about 15 Marines, five sailors, and five militia? No, no, remember I said more sailors than marines. I think oh, more we sailors need, than marines? I think we okay. need more effective people to work the ship. We need, if we can get the marines to be the exceptional people, less of them, but better. Right. And also, people who fight get a larger share. Okay, well then how about 15 sailors, 5 militia, and 5 marines? I don't like it, but you're the first mate, so I will concede to this point. I mean, uh, am I not the first mate for future missions? Uh, no, I know. Uh, Madame has uh, already been uh, considered first mate. I, I, I would suggest that since, since you want to do since you want to do a lot of piracy and boarding, and we want to take another ship, I would suggest that we need more pirates. I would suggest that we do ten. Uh, that that we do, um, <laughs> you know, ten, that we do ten marines, ten sailors, and five militia. And militia, by the way, are going to be like the other roles, like the ship's cook. You know, the official carpenter, that sort of thing. It's right, like, right. Which is my point of view is that militia in a bad situation are going to be limited in their dice. Which that's means why they're five. Mm -hmm. Right. I just see them as being completely useless. I'm going to look down my nose at them, is all I'm saying. Okay. I mean, but you need that kind of, you know, uh, they're also useful in the maintenance section. Right. Which There's is. There's a minimum of five crew in maintenance. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's also, I'd, I'd like to have those guys for when we go ashore and have to repair the boat. As I said, I disagree, but at the same time recognize that you have knowledge that I do not, and I'm willing to go along with. Alright, let's do okay. so that's it. decided. With three successes, I would propose that we shouldn't have any trouble doing that. So we interview candidates, and that's what we hire. I'm sorry, so, so give you? me the final totals here. But final was, okay, that was Ten militia. Sorry, five oh, militia. You... Five militia. Uh, five militia. Sorry, I just went on a a spree. Right, right. Ten marines. There we go. Mathematically now correct. Yeah, ten sailors, ten marines, and five militia. And basically, that's like the ship's cook, the Wainwright. Oh my God, it's not Wainwright. The coffin Wainwright. maker. The, the, the Cooper, because barrel making man. Welcome, welcome to the age of piracy. Do you like barrels? Boy, do we have barrels! <laughs> it's like you barrels know, people like talk, talk about video games having crates. We don't make crates. We make barrels. Barrels are way better than crates. Barrels are our ship's escape pods. So, um, what I would think is, with one success on the crier, you guys would find like half the people half the number you needed with two you'd find all the number you needed with three you find the number you needed and some percent of them would be right elite right d8s instead of d6s so, so be, yeah but you don't have to tell us which ones are elites and which ones aren't first of all it doesn't matter that much for the skills and second of all um we wouldn't know until we actually blooded them so um i, I would suggest just to keep your sanity that's the crew that we have the most okay. important thing is, if we need to do a military operation, this is what we have. The Marines can do any military operation we need to do. The militia can fight if they have to. Like, they can operate the cannons and that kind of stuff. But their major job is, you know, it's Long John Silver. It's the cook, the cooper, uh, the, uh, I guess, the scene person for the sales. You know, you it's, can it's always the, raid a town, is what I'll say. Right. So there we go. Yeah. It's it's those guys. Okay. And we have a clue. Awesome. Yes. On uh, what was the name? Oh, Lawson's Folly. Lawson's <laughs> Folly. 
<laughs> Why is your ship named an Episcopal officer? It's a it's a joke. Yeah, it's an inside lot. joke. Please come aboard our ship alone, and we'll tell you it. Yes. <laughs> okay, I like it. All right. I'm excited. All we have to do is get to Richport. All we have to do is run that blockade and not die. Oh, how much? Um, how much tonnage in? What was it? Stone? Did we get? Eight. Uh, eight. Yeah, we're gonna fill Wait. this thing to capacity. So. Hey, now uh, there is an appointment that most ships don't have. You can overload the ship. It adds extra space. And stone is what expensive. Oh, this quarried stone is uh, extravagant. Extravagant. Actually. Extravagant. It yeah. requires skilled labor, and you can only quarry certain kinds of stone. So this is like, uh, like I said, this might be marble, but in this case, uh, I mean, like, I don't know too much about this. But usually, when you build the castles, you like build the stone, and then you put the dirt, and then you put more stone on top of it. So not only will it stand up when you put the cannons on top of it, but also when you fire the cannons into it, it won't fall over. Right, I was just right. keeping your thing up to date, that's all. Uh, I do have one more question, which is, Alba, did you ever get an answer on how much obsidian you could turn into weapons? Abla, not Alba. No. Abla, yeah, sorry. I have not. I was waiting for you to take care of the other important matters. All right. Oh, we got our crew, so now's the time, I think. I'm just making my note over here for our extravagant stone. Okay. All right, you had said that basically the weight of the weapons that you're making is like a quarter or an eighth of a stone, so we were extrapolating that from the amount of tonnage, how many of these things you could craft. Yeah. So if a ton is 160 stone, we said, you multiply that by four, that's probably your total capacity. And then it's just a factor of time. So, one. How many can you make per day? So, 640 would be your total max. Okay, so. Uh, Progress per hour. Your... And what did we say these things were? Extravagant, expensive. I'm making mirror. M E R E. And what, what uh, cost is that? Let me look it up. It's seventy-five dinar. And is it considered so expensive or extravagant or rare? Extravagant. Or extravagant. Extravagant and rare. Okay. And so the way that this thing handles it is, it'd be fifteen denarii times the number of successes per hour. So if we if you wrote to do it, how many successes would you have on a rote? Four dice. So I'd have four successes per rote. Okay. Aren't isn't roting oh, you total your two, dice and then two, have it? Two rote. Two, two rote, rote, yeah. So I was wrong. Okay. So it'd be like thirty per hour, so it would take you we can round it and say it would take you two hours per construction of one of these bad boys. So yeah. So to do the whole to turn all of that into weapons would how be many divided by two. Per day? Holy shit, how much are you building? Well, it doesn't have to be all the obsidian, of course, because we, we can't They're trade creating them. a trade good. We're focusing on one ton. 24. So be... I'm taking an expensive material and turning it into extravagant items. How many hours a day are you working on it? Yeah, so you could do 13 of these things in 24 hours. If you so 13 divided by th 3. So if you did like 8 hour shifts, you could do basically four four of these things in 8 hours. Yeah, unless you needed for crafting on other things on the boat then I would just be spending time doing that. Another 160 days of man days of work. Well, if you Good news, four... you'll have 10 militia with you. If you just four every eight hours, right? You could work on this like 16 hours a day or more? Uh, just, I guess, eight hours. I, I... Yeah. Uh, I to to go ahead and offer this up. Well, we were doing like eight 18-hour shifts on the boat. Yeah, if so you do... 
Right. We could say that, like, if you're also doing other duties on the boat during the day, you could do four of these things a day. Like, eight hours of your day would be doing this, eight hours would be doing something else, and then eight hours would be sleeping. Well, right? remember, we had that seven days where we didn't do anything yet, so I thought that's what we were doing. Right. I so mean, there yeah, are two we... observations I can make here. One, mm -hmm. you can equip every single person on the boat with that after a week. Awesome. Good stuff. Uh, two, if you have your 10 uh, militia and they are working alongside of you, you can make two tons of these every month. Uh, do they? Um, I guess there's nothing preventing them from also learning if your it's craft. A... Yeah, I just right. divided 160 by 11 here. It's like, all right, they are assistants under the Master Crafter. They all work together. They get it done. Every month they can turn two tons of obsidian into two tons of weapon goods instead. That would make sense, right? You guys might be in port for longer, too. I mean, how long does it take to well, mount cannons onto We just ship? figured out the amount of crew that we got for the guy we paid seven days. So I'm yeah. just assuming seven days is where we're at right now. Yeah. This is just an offer of what can happen in the future and a suggestion. So I'm just pointing out that if Abla worked 16 hours a day for those seven days, he'd make whatever I just put there, 56 so, of them. Well, what's the labor for light cannon? There should be like a little like hammer and... Uh, oh, let me go ahead and roll on up to that real quick. Light? I got it. It is... 300. 300. Okay, so it takes 300 man days worth of labor to do that, which means that if we want it done in a week, 300 by 7, if they had five guys working on it all week long, it could be done in, a, in, in another week. Five guys sounds pretty reasonable. Oh, yeah, I yeah. saw that place around the corner. Five guys can't end the fries. Five guys can't end. <laughs> Don't make that mistake twice. Make a note somewhere around here. There we uh, go. Okay. All right, so it looks like I've just armed the crew with damage plus three weak critical weapons. Damn it, I don't I mean, I use... I want to see how play too. I don't use weapons. <laughs> It's like I look at all the money, it's a cute. How oh, cool, I get two shares. I don't need to buy anything. Mm -hmm. And I live as cheaply as possible. And I made sure the ship is full of food. Consider it putting money towards uh, buying your own ship later, I guess. Or at I least that's what I'm doing. I, what are you talking about? I have my own ship and you're standing on it. <laughs> also, I've pointed out that I'm probably all of my money is going to go to repairing the ship inevitably when it gets damaged. I figure right, that's right. probably what the extra share is for anyway. Plus, I'm going to go crazy at one point and say, point us at that other ship and go full speed. <clears throat> Just I am moment one now. twelfth of the way towards buying my own middling ship. Look, I am designed to board ships, so eventually I'm going to say damn it and board a ship one way or another. Well, we're coming up to the end of our time today, so you guys can plan how to get past this blockade next session. Yep. Um, Let's go ahead and do the mottos and do the gifts. Yeah, we'll start. Let's start with the we we normally kind of do this the other way, but let's start with the goal goal completion because it's going to be the same for everybody. Oh boy, uh, as what it should did I do be. here? As it should be, right? So, you guys completed the goal of finding a crew for the Lawson's Folly. Uh, for this, I offer the reward of local knowledge uh, Gangwo, because you spent a whole week here chatting up the locals. Not me, you spent it on the ship, which makes perfect sense for my 5 XP that I got. Alright. By the way, I have a question, since yeah. we're in the uh, goals area. Do I know where Meriwether's Pendant is? Uh, you know yes. Yes, you do. And I should probably put it on the map. That's, what, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that'll become a destination. Let me figure that out for next time. Understood. So I'll put it on the map. It, it's obviously not something we're heading towards. I just want to know for the future. Like, if we go past it. 
the gift was local area knowledge of Gengao. Gengguo, yeah. Mm-hmm. Throw something out here. So right now, I think it's my life, my love, my lady is the sea. <laughs> No local area knowledge for me. Okay. It is and... highly tempting to keep them. Not for me. All right. Okay. And let's do our our debrief. We can start up here with Ark. Ark, tell us your character and any debrief notes for the session. I'm Ark Lord. I play Abla, the... Uh... Karina Kamahi Gohatu, and her motto is chip away. Her uh, personality is stubborn. I had a good time today. I'm sorry that I was, uh, you know, butting in on the important matters with my uh, character's uh, side interests. You were not butting in. This was a very, a very, um, I don't know. This was the shopping episode, and everybody... Yeah. <laughs> did a lot of shopping and i'd say that you did the least out of everyone so i apologize if it was kind of a boring uh boring session i don't know i mean i was i was listening in on everything i was having fun just being with you guys uh did should i keep track of how many of these things i'm making to uh sell later or is somebody else yeah. keeping track of our trade builds and whatnots I think we should we should make sure that we make all of our trade deals public to the party. But if you want to keep track individually of how many days pass and how many of these things you have available, we can set it up as a Google Doc for sure. Okay. Yeah, if you guys want to go in all in on that. By the way, there's can. things that you're making. How much do they weigh individually? Eighth of a stone. Okay, I was just wondering how much obsidian turns into poundage or sorry, stonage of weapons. This is a fair point. So, well, but we can just assume that it's one for one. And how many do I make per day so I can put that down? Depends on how long uh, you eight. work in a day. Oh, wait, four per an eight hour shift. Right, so four if you're not hours, working on anything. Once per two hours. If you're not working on anything else, you work 16 hours a day on it. Right. I'm just, I want to keep eight my own day. notes so I don't have to ask this again. I'm just putting a little note on the bottom of my sheet that I've built. 56, and I can do four per eight hours works. So if you want to get even more granular, you could say one takes two hours to make, because that's really what the math is. But again, also, got to consider that when you're on the ship and we're on high seas, you're probably doing a job. Not a lot of extra time. Right, so this is more or less a, a port, port activity. activity. Yeah. And I assume when I'm on the ship, I'm working on the ship. Yeah, you're one of the maintenance people, right? Yeah. I got one of your captain of station, but head maintenance person. Okay, cool. So anyway, uh, next up we've got Griff. Uh, hey everybody, I'm Griff. I'm playing Gaston. His motto is perfection incarnate. Uh, I've been demoted, but that's okay. I am banking two thousand two hundred worth of ship share here, <laughs> so that's always good. I think I will go ahead and declare I will go ahead and sell back the new local knowledge and insider with the bisclave in order to increase my will. Okay. And Even I will stubborn. also be buying uh, a single die of negotiation. All right. Good to have. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got Rafferty. <laughs> yes! I am Madden Raferno. I am... Horrible, horrible Purina, Purina, um Marine. Yes, I managed to lie to rich people and once again, you know, strike a blow for liberty, egality, and camaraderie. And um, I'm hard pressed. So I'm gonna hold on to this. I mean, on the one hand, I'm I want to sell back my insider at this company Navy, but probably after this con is over, uh, I really should be buying Cosmopolitan so I could be like uniting the people. But I gotta wait for that. All right. And last but not least, we've got Theta. Uh, yeah, Captain Cow, Kangaroo Silla Warrior. If I die trying, then at least I tried. And obviously, yeah, I sold back that uh, local knowledge. I have a question. 
since obviously I must have I, I was stupid. Mm -hmm. I probably have a default language could have been trade winds pigeon. Can I just make that my default and get back that language Rafferty... that I bought? Yeah, I think that's what Rafferty did, right? So. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't yeah, make it sense kind now. of there's a sidebar in there that you could just make your default language the pigeon, in which case. Uh, but I mean, like, I'm a pirate bastard. I've known nothing but horribleness all my life. It sounds, it sounds like, that. like that. Yeah, well, I've, that was doing. literally the first uh, gift in my chosen and character creation was extra language. This it's like I didn't even think that this could just be my default language, and I have no default language. There you go. So, what should I do about this? Is this just a five back, five XP sellback or what? I mean, you should if you had. Taken it as your default, it would have been you use one of your starting gifts for it, right? Like right, if that was the I'm case, saying. then you should have ten XP's worth if you yeah. want to do that, um, rather than selling it back because you're not you wouldn't really be selling it back to something you would have started with. So do you want to just take an, a different starting gift? Right, I'll just switch that out. I'll probably just take an improved something career okay. or stat. I'll yeah, I'll just. Don't know what I'm picking right now, but it'll be just an improved stat or career uh, skill or something, whatever. Simply cool. real easy, doesn't change anything. Right. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, I, this was, I feel like I learned a lot this session. We did a lot of, we engaged with a lot of the rules, and I'm glad because I feel like I, I definitely now understand how the trade system works, which I didn't really before. <laughs> Just looking at it in the book. I'm a tactile learner. I got to do stuff. Yeah. I mean, we, we did put in examples because people asked about it. But like once you get used to it, I mean, I, I think it's like, like basically it's just, is it an import, neutral, or export? Okay, make a roll. I mean, success you get. This is what you get for it. And once you saw that it was like, oh, you get 60% for this and 100% for that. Perfect. We'll just do a two for one trade. We're done. Perfect. I'm, I'm completely happy with, with how this, th this is, a level of sophistication enough that I can appreciate that there's nuance to it, and I think without being too complicated. Like I said, I'm really yeah. irritated these other games that just say, I'll just roll a die and see how much it's worth. Yeah, I think the the only complication here is the ones that we're like putting back into it, like how much is our birthing and such like that. But that's I because mean, we are opting yeah. to do so this rather than being lot... informed that we must. This could get a lot more complicated. Like I, I, uh, I mean, as I'm editorializing here, it's like everyone seems excited that Spelljammer is coming out. I don't know why, because if you run Spelljammer, oh my god, uh, the okay. amount of uh, of inventory tracking you would have to do, uh, the amount of inventory tracking you'd have to do boggles my mind. But then no one's going to do it, so who cares? Mm -hmm. And that's the thing is, I, I think there's a big difference between you know, like high seas. Uh, pirate fantasy and the reality uh, or and like this kind of simulationist thing to be fair we are a group here who really appreciates how like the historical simulation can create really interesting situations and stories um i think that requires more work than a lot of people are putting in but i am happy with the results so i'm into it i also can't begrudge anyone who just wants to be like uh when can i roll to swing from the mizzen mast and <laughs> land on a dude's face. Hey, we stole all of our goods. We could just drop them off and go. We didn't have to negotiate anything. It's all pure profit. Well, the thing that made that like made me interested in all of this is while you guys are talking about the logistics, I'm sitting here thinking about this like, you know, inland lake town and how the people are responding to your, you know, foreign bisclavere ship and all of that is it's like a giant montage, but it is a very interesting montage, so I'm enjoying it as well. Even if I didn't get to do any funny voices today. We will def well, we have at least a new character to do funny voices with. We got our cat sponsor. Yes. Who I kind of wrote in the goal, but I gave her a name. Her name is Z Lim. Mm -hmm. So in case she comes up again in conversation later, I've got that shit written down. There we go. Okay, any parting shots before we sign off for today? Sounds like no, so I guess I'll see you guys next week. Thank you for playing. Right. See you around, everybody. A book of corals out real soon.
Can't wait.